Hey everyone. So a while back, I did a video where we used the Microsoft Custom Vision service to create this model here, where it not only tells us if we have a red or white wine in the photo, but it's actually an object detection model. So it tells us some information on where in the photo the wine is. But this is all on Custom Vision. What if I want to use this model in ML.net? Well, we can do that. And the first thing here is we need to uh, export this model. So we go to up to performance here and then export. And we got different types of files that we can export here. CoreML, TensorFlow, a Docker file with the, the model in it. But what I'm going to use is the Onyx file here. So I'll click on this and export. All right, then I'll click download once it's ready. And it downloads the model file and some other stuff here for me. All right, so this download finished. Let's go ahead and export or extract out the files here. And let's see what we have is we have our Onyx file here that we'll be using. And then we also have a labels file here and it tells us red or white, which is the, the labels in our custom vision model. Then it gives us some sample code in C sharp and Python that we won't actually be, be needing here. So let's go to Visual Studio here. And I already have a project set up. I have a model folder here, a test folder with a couple of test files that I'll be using. One for red one, another one for white one. Then I have a this bounding box class. And if you notice in the program here, I have some uh, some variables and helper items already set up that we'll be using later. But for the model file that we have here, all we need to do is take the Onyx file and the labels file. And I'm going to move those over to the model folder here. Now I'm just going to set these to copy over. Now that we have our model exported, now we can start using it. And I'm going to go ahead and download some NuGet dependencies. So the first thing we'll need is ML.NET itself. Use the 1.4 version here. Since we're doing images, I'm going to get the image analytics NuGet package. And since we have a model file, I'm going to get the Onyx transformer package as well. All right, with that, we can get started building our ML.NET uh, pipeline here. The first thing is we need the new ML context. We're just using the Onyx model here. We're not using any input data. I'm going to create some empty data. There's going to be a new list. There's going to be type of one input. And let's go ahead and create this file. And since we are done with images, I'm going to create a property. It's going to be a, a bitmap type. I'm going to call it image. And for ML.NET, we need to add an attribute to it called the image type. And this can take in the height and width of the image. And one of those helper uh, items that I mentioned earlier includes an image settings and all that just has the image height and the image width and both of these are set to 416. All right, so we have our empty data. Now we can create an odd data view with it. Use the context data load from enumerable and we just pass in the empty data into it. Now we can create our pipeline here. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a transform and resize the images. And this, this is the pipeline when you give it an image to run against the model. So it's going to first resize the image. And I'm set resizing property. And I'll set the, the resizing kind to fill. Then I'll set the output column name to data, the image width, using that same image settings, the image height to the image settings as well, then the input column name, I'll use the name of keyword, and I'll use the one input image property. So that's it for the resize images. Next, I'll append to it another transform where it extracts the image pixels. Then I'll just set the output column name for here, set it to data as well. And our last atom in the pipeline 
we will call the transform to apply onyx model and we give it the model file which is in the model folder called model.onyx give it the output column name we don't get to actually name the output column name whatever we want we have to be specific to whatever the output column name in this onyx file here and there's actually a way we can get that name using a tool called neutron so let's take a look at where to get that and how to use it all right i'm at the github repo here at the the neutron project and this is just a little desktop app that where you can get some information on a model here and to to get it just go to the releases and then download the release for your platform when you start it up it's going to be just kind of an empty uh, screen here we can open the model and just give it the model that we had downloaded from custom vision yeah, and it gives us some information about our model here we can click on the model properties and it gives us our inputs and then our outputs and in fact we gave our input the same as the input here but it gives us the output name as well here so we're going to copy this the model outputs name and then we'll put that in our output column name in ml.net here and then we'll specify the input call name as data all right so now that we have our pipeline we can call fit on it with our empty data and now that we have that model we can create a prediction engine so in the one input is our input then we do a one prediction is our output here and we'll just pass in the model for this one prediction I just give it a single property it's going to be a float uh, float array I call it predicted labels then let me give it an attribute here, the column name attribute from mo.net. And I'll call it model outputs zero, make it match what we saw in the Netron uh, application for the model. And before we can predict on it, we need to get our, our references to our test files here. Pretty quick, I'll just do a variable have a string array with the names of those test files that we've shown and then I can loop through each of those files so we have the image name and then I'm going to use a stream specifically a new file stream that can read that file and get the the file information from it so I'll give it the path and I'll give it file mode open and in the stream, I'm going to set a test image variable. And I'm going to do image that from stream and pass in the stream here. This test image I'll set up here is a bitmap. We get an error here, we can't convert it. So I can do an explicit cast to a bitmap from that from stream. All right, so now that we have the bitmap of our, our test images, we can get a prediction using the prediction engine. Predict, give it new one input, and just set the image to the test image. Now here's where we're gonna be starting using all these, these extra helper methods here. And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't come up with all of these. Email.net sample that reads from a custom vision onyx model has these so so i use those as well and honestly i doubt i could come up with all of this if you look at all these helper methods here and what these pretty much all do is allow you to use that bounding box class here it just gets the bounding box information from the model and it just calculates it to what we can put into our image to create the bounding box. That's pretty much all that this is doing. So we can get our bounding boxes using the parse output method. Given the predicted labels, and then we actually need to get the labels from that labels file up here. 
So I'll just set this up here before the loop, labels, and that's just going to be file that read all lines. And I'll pass in that labels file. Let me get the original width of the test image. Let me get the same with the height. And so I'll do a check here. If we have at least one bounding box, I'll get the max confidence that it gets from it using the max link method here. And it has that confidence property on it. And I'll get the top bounding box with that max confidence. Use the first or default length method. It's going to be the first one. It's going to be the first bounding box where the confidence equals that max confidence. Now I'm going to clear all these bounding boxes and then add the top one. So I only have one bounding box that's going to be the, the one with the max confidence because it can give you multiple bounding boxes uh, for each of the predictions that it, that it gives you. So it can have multiple predictions for where in the image it, the one is, but we're just going to take in the, the top one. And here is where we're going to be using a bunch of that, a bunch of those helper methods. In fact, I'll just, I'll just copy these over because it, it's a good bit of math here. Right, I misspelled the original height and width here. But basically, it's just getting the X and Y width and height of the bounding boxes so we know where to draw that rectangle onto the image. And we're using the graphics API here to draw that rectangle. And we're going to draw the string of the description, which is pretty much give us the confidence percentage. And then we're going to save that test image to the file system and give the name. And then that's what we can use to look at the file that has the information from our model. All right, so let's run this and see what we get here. All right, so that ran. So let's go to our bin folder and our test. There you go, so we got our two predicted files. Here's the red one, and hopefully y'all can see this okay. We got our, our nice bounding box on it, and it says it's a red one and a 76% confident on it. White one is a little bit different. I know the bounding box didn't get the entire one, but it's pretty close. And it did predict it to be white and it's 59% confident. All right, everyone, that's just how you can use your custom vision model within ML.net. If you look, the pipeline is actually pretty simple. Uh, just dealing with the images, the resize, extract them, and then we just apply the Onyx model. And then you have to use that Netron tool to get the output column names in there. Now than that, the, the biggest part here is going to be doing this. And hopefully it, it gets easier in the future where we don't have to do all this to get our bounding boxes. But for now, this is what we have to do. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.